Welcome to this week's Market Talk. I'm Amber Lancaster, joined by Paul Manpilly and Ian Dyer. Each week, we look forward to sharing our viewpoints with you, our readers, and giving insight into what's on our radar. Today's outlook is for the week of May 20th, 2019. I'll begin by sharing with you what I'm watching, and then we'll hear from Ian and Paul. However, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, the Paul Mampilli YouTube channel, so you'll never miss our weekly market updates. And as an investor, we would love to know your thoughts and questions on the topics we'll cover today. So please be sure to comment below so we can follow up with you. Today, I'll cover three topics. The first will be my take on recent economic releases and upcoming releases, as well as the U.S. earnings front. And the second will be my story of the week. And the third will be the latest performance numbers on the Disruptification Index. So with the ongoing U.S.-China trade negotiations as a backdrop, last week we saw several positive U.S. economic releases showing the continued buoyancy of the U.S. economy. Here are three standouts. The first release was April's housing starts. Housing starts rose 5.7% in April to 1,235,000, beating the projected census of 1,209,000. This increase was stronger than expected. And what's fueling this rise is the decreasing difference between the price of an existing home versus a newly built home. Since mm -hmm. the price variance is smaller, more home buyers are opting to purchase new construction homes. And overall, the housing start increase was seen in both single family and multifamily homes. The second positive release last week was the Empire Manufacturing Index. This index is a monthly survey of general business conditions in New York State. And the survey captures sentiment from approximately 200 manufacturers in the state. Now, this chart illustrates how the survey results for May climbed to a six-month high. The index came in at a reading of 17.8 from what was versus 10.1 in April. So any level above zero indicates improving conditions. And in all, May's reading is a notable indication of good things to come. And lastly, the third positive release as seen in this chart shows a major rebound in manufacturing. The index indicating this rebound is the Philadelphia Federal Business Outlook Survey Diffusion Index. This index, which measures changes in regional manufacturing growth, nearly doubled from the month, for the month of May to 16.6 from 8.5 in April. Economists were expecting a reading of nine. So a reading of, for this one above zero indicates factory sector growth. Now, looking forward to this week's economic releases, here are the most significant releases. As you can see in this graphic, on Tuesday, April's existing home sales will post at 10 a.m. On Thursday, market U.S. manufacturing purchasing managers index for May preliminary reading will post at 9.45 a.m. And April new home sales will post at 10 a.m. And lastly, preliminary durable good order numbers for April will be, be released on Friday at 8.30 a.m. Now, where earnings are concerned, check out this list of some of the top U.S. securities reporting earnings for this week. There will be a total of 29 releases, and these companies include big retail stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, and Target. Now, my story of the week focuses on a huge technology event that just wrapped up this weekend in Paris. The event called Viva Technology, or Viva Tech for short, is in its fourth year running. Viva Tech is described as follows. It's a celebration of today's innovations and tomorrow's possibilities for everyone who believes in the power of technology to transform business and society. Viva Tech breaks down the traditional barriers between grassroots innovators and global leaders. So in all, the event matches startups 
with established companies for themed high energy open innovation. So as this graphic shows, this event was attended by 100,500 people, 9,000 startups, 1,900 investors, 1,900 journalists, 450 speakers spanning 125 countries. Now, one of the key highlights of this event was providing a continued evolution in the robotic exoskeleton industry. So at the event, attendees witnessed an extraordinary feat where disability and mobility are concerned. So in short, exoskeletons are becoming the new wheelchairs. So at the event, a, wheel, a wheelchair-bound former trapeze artist stood and walked while wearing a prototype from the Swiss firm Twice. These photos show the former trapeze artist climbing stairs with the help of Twice's robotic exoskeleton. Twice is a lower limb exoskeleton that enables paraplegic people to stand and walk again. Its goal is to manufacture exoskeletons that are reliable, lighter, and affordable. This exoskeleton weighs 35 pounds and it runs on a battery. So its battery life is about three hours and the exoskeleton is customizable to fit various disabilities and body shapes. And it clearly clearly has the potential to improve many lives. So back on March 7 of this year, Ian wrote an article explaining the exceptional growth in store for this industry. And in all he noted that by 2025, the robotic exoskeleton market is poised to grow 3,000%. So turning to our disruptification index, this chart shows it continues to outperform major indices year to date. As of Friday, May 17th close, the index is up 19.9% versus 17.8% on the NASDAQ and 10.4% on the Dow. So that's it for me and Ian, what are you watching today? Thank you, Amber. So yeah, a lot of um, great macro data last week. Thursday was full of really good information. Um, so the 5.7% housing starts was huge. And that was really what stuck out to me because that means that not only are the housing starts up, of course, that logically means that we're gonna be building more new homes uh, and new home sales have been the strongest uh, in about 10 years recently. So the new home sales are gonna keep being strong. There's huge demand for them, especially from millennials who make up about 40% now of the home buying market. Uh, so housing looks very good. There was also an increase in building permits in April. So that is kind of even further back on that chain uh, where you get the permit, then you have uh, the house built or the built or the building built or factories or anything. And that just shows that there's a lot of demand for productivity, for jobs as the economy continues to get stronger. So construction uh, has to do with that too, because if you're having all these things built, you need somebody to build them. And construction jobs are one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Uh, in April, it was reported a couple weeks ago, and I think I pointed out that uh, about 33,000 construction jobs were added in April, making the total for 2019 about 86,000 construction jobs. And it's, that's one of the biggest growing uh, industries in the country in terms of the job market. And speaking of the job market, Thursday also it was reported that about 212,000 jobless claims were reported over the past week which is extremely low. And we're still right around that 200,000 to 220,000 range that we've been seeing. And that's really the lowest since about the 70s. So we're seeing 45 to 50 year lows in jobless claims. So that signifies a very strong uh, job market as well as growing uh, construction demand and productivity, uh, as well as the growing real estate market. So all in all, the, econ the economy still has a lot of bullish information coming out, a lot of great data. And of course, we're still bullish on the economy. We believe that stocks uh, in the US are a great investment right now. Uh, and the, what I wanna focus on today uh, in terms of disruptification is marijuana. And one of the, it's one of the biggest growing uh, industries in the country right now. Um, so there are four big marijuana publicly traded companies. And these four companies uh, had about $230 million in sales last year. This year, it's supposed to jump up to $940 million, And then by 2023, it's supposed to be all the way up to $7.7 billion. 
So that's exponential growth, absolutely, over the, past, over the next five years, uh, about 2,300% sales growth. So that's something that you really don't see very often, and it's a, a huge opportunity um, to invest in. But not only that, uh, there's also been a huge kind of letting off of the stigma that surrounded marijuana over the past 50 to 70 years. And as a result, it's becoming legal in more and more places, especially uh, in middle America, where there was kind of the heaviest pushback about legalization. And um, so within that time period, 33 states have made medical marijuana legal. Uh, the last to do so was Oklahoma, which goes back to the whole uh, middle America legalization. And it's been a complete hit there. So it was legalized last June. And uh, so far, they've had about 70,000 people sign up for medical marijuana licenses. So it's a huge audience that is targeting uh, across all ages um, and it's just really getting huge. So in uh, 2015, in June, uh, there were about 24,000 total med medical marijuana patients in the United States. And about three years later, May 2018, that number was all the way up to 2.1 million. So that is huge growth, again, just for three years, uh, basically nothing to a couple million people uh, having medical marijuana licenses. And it's uh, people are reporting that it's extremely useful, especially for pain. So of course, with the aging baby boomer generation, uh, there's a lot of demand for this as a pain treatment. And with the uh, growing kind of crisis with opioids and narcotics that have really high addiction potential and really bad side effects, uh, this is proving to be a really strong alternative. And uh, recently there was a really big survey done with thousands and thousands of older Americans and about two thirds said that not only did the medical marijuana uh, improve their pain significantly, but it also helped them get off of uh, opioids. 27% of those people said that they completely were able to quit opioids and the rest are uh, weaning off of it. Um, of course, it's a kind of a slow process, but uh, people are really benefiting from it, not only because of the pain, but it's also helping them to get off of more harmful drugs. Uh, and there was also a huge, um, a huge reception in terms of whether or not they'd recommend it. So about 86% of those baby boomers and silent generation patients would recommend it to other people as a pain treatment. And last year, there was also a huge step taken uh, by the FDA. Uh, they, they, were, uh, they approved a medical marijuana, actual plant-based medication for the first time ever. Uh, from a company called GW Pharmaceuticals, and this medication treats uh, two forms of epilepsy in children, and it's by far the best treatment that they've ever had for it. So the benefits just keep piling up, um, and it's uh, absolutely uh, a huge hit across, like I said, all ages. Um, and of course, it's still Schedule 1, so that means that there are no known medical benefits, but of course, that's going to change uh, just in due time. And that's going to propel the growth even further once it's legal on a federal scale. Uh, and as, as states continue to legalize it um, for medical purposes, that's just going to make it grow even more and more. Um, and in my article this Thursday, I'm actually going to talk even more about this. And I'm going to give what I think is the best way to invest in this industry and get in this, into this growth while it's still very young and has a long way to go. So make sure you keep an eye out. For that, my bold profits daily on Thursday, because uh, I'm going to go into a lot more detail. And that's all I have for this week, Paul. Thanks, Ian. Um, we have a lot going on with respect to the the trade war. And uh, last week in the bold profits daily, I did my update on why you should buy, you should stay in. And I was just looking at my phone where I was getting alerts on. Uh, on, on stocks that are in our portfolios. And I believe today, I can't tell, I haven't seen the actual market, but I'm sure the market's moving down because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. For example, Google is now going to uh, stop Huawei, which is uh, China's big uh, uh, cell phone maker from using Android. Well, that's a big deal. That pretty much wipes out Huawei as a business. I mean, if, because they, they don't have the software to be actually be able to put into these phones and it would take them years to be able to develop one so that's a that's a big deal um, so I mean there's a, going to be a lot of volatility however 
Uh, from looking at whether it be the numbers or even looking at where we are as a country and as an economy, I would tell you that what I said in the update still stands, which is that interest rates are really ultimately the big bogeyman, the boogeyman, if you will, of markets because it completely changes why you would want to invest in the markets. High interest rates mean you can just leave your money in savings accounts, leave your money in bonds, uh, leave your money in things that don't move up and down, not subject to the big whims of investors that swing from side to side. And that's the big deal. And interest rates are low and there's a good chance that they may go lower. So that would be a boost to stocks, boost for the demand for stocks. Uh, second thing is that productivity is rising and that is a big deal. We really have not seen this for 30 years even. Really, we saw a, a small amount of growth in, in the late 90s. However, that, that's, that's the big kahuna, if you will, of economies and countries and societies. You have rising productivity. In other words, every time you go to invest, you're starting to get more versus what you would have you know, two years ago. As I put it, you know, doing more with less. That's productivity, whether it be investing in people, machines, or anything like that. So we're optimistic. We still think that you want to stay invested in the stock market. And if you're looking for places to invest, we would tell you to focus on the things that we focus on at Bull Profits. Innovation companies, disruptification companies, uh, companies that have products and services that really look forward, that are off the new. And that's where you'd focus on. Now, the S&P 500 and even the NASDAQ, they're a mix of the new and the old. And you know what I've been saying for a long time. The old is going to go to zero. Some will go slowly, some will go fast, but they're all going to zero. The destination is certain, just the speed is unknown. Uh, the new, you will have to face volatility. Uh, and that means that on days like this, you might have a stock that's down five or 7%, and it will make you think, oh, I should sell everything. And in all of our services, we guide our readers in how to stay in, how to allocate their portfolios. And we also put videos out on this channel and we send emails out to all of you also letting you know uh, what, what to do when days like this happen. Uh, quickly want to cover uh, popular stocks like Tesla. Tesla, the stock has been going down. There's a lot of concern about it. And in fact, you know, Elon Musk, uh, has even gone and bought some more stock as part of an offering that they recently did. However, if I look at Tesla from a technology basis, uh, there's something really cool going on that a lot of people are missing. And for sure, the, the media uh, has no interest in covering because from my perspective, the media gets nothing from Tesla. Tesla never advertises. So they have no interest in writing them up positively. Uh, GM, Ford, and all the others spent a lot of money on advertising, and obviously the gasoline companies also spent a lot of money on advertising. And so you'll never hear any of this. So um, you look at this chart, which you know is going to show that the cost per mile of driving an electric vehicle is like in deep collapse. It's gone from 70 cents to 49 cents, and it will go even lower over the next one, two, three years. In other words, the economic logic for owning an electric car is only getting better. And it's getting better in such a way where it will draw more and more people in. So while Tesla stock has been going down because of all kinds of worries, et cetera, however, their business is actually getting better. They're selling more cars. Their autonomous vehicle software is, is getting better. And in general, more and more people of a certain age increasingly are just really saving up to buy an electric car. And so things are going well for them. Google, as I mentioned, is going to ban Huawei from using Android, and that's a big deal um, uh, for, for Google. And, and perversely, it's also a big deal for really all the manufacturers of cell phones around the world, in Europe, Apple, here, because if the Chinese don't have software to put in their phones, well, uh, that's kind of like a brick, you know, it's a nice computer brick. Um, one thing that I want to mention on Facebook that goes back to something Ian wrote about last week, which is about, you know, the explosion of esports and gaming as just a gigantic deal, you know, growth rates that are just going to be in the hundreds of percent, thousands of percent. And a widely owned, known stock Facebook, people forget they own a virtual reality maker. And uh, I was talking with my kids this weekend and they're like, hey, daddy, um, you know, so-and-so, you know, they pre-ordered 
uh, I think I forget the name of the headset. I think it's the Oculus Rift or, or, or they, but whatever it is, this is the first headset that does not require a computer. So you are no longer like have to be with a computer. In other words, it frees virtual reality to go into the wild. And so this is like a big deal that I think is really going to push the growth rate up. So it's something to watch for Facebook. Um, if you're in it and you know, one of our services, we've been recommending it and our readers have made great money in it. So here's my shameless plug for this video. We are promoting a new service that we're starting that I believe is going to be an unbelievable, incredible service. And it goes back to taking advantage of a technique that I learned about from being on Wall Street of where how Wall Street is the one, you know, when stocks go down a lot and they cause headlines, you go on market watch and go XYZ stock 10%. Oh my God, everybody's in a panic. Well, just flip this through. Who's buying at that moment? Who's buying at that moment? Well, it's the Wall Street market makers, the Wall Street insiders, is those folks that know how to game the game, know how to get you to sell your stock cheap, and they buy it. And later on, they mark it up, and it's sold for much higher prices, and you come back and you think, oh no, I should have stayed in. Well, we have learned to take advantage of the gamers. As we like to say, we are looking to game the gamers, and if you'd like to know more about the service, we're gonna have a link uh, either show up in the video or else underneath, and so you can sign up. So we are gonna have a, 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 uh, a, a video and an update where you can learn all about the service. I believe it's gonna be a phenomenal service and should sign up and check it out. Okay, moving on to IPOs. There are some really exciting, unbelievable IPOs coming this week that are about another part of the economy that we tell you about that's part of disruptification, which is the gig economy. There is a company called Fiverr that is coming. This is a big deal. If you're someone that works in the gig economy, you've probably dealt with Fiverr. And you also know of other ones that are gonna be coming soon, Upwork and WeWork, and these are all gonna be coming soon. And while you're gonna hear a lot of negativity from the mainstream media and from MarketWatch and Yahoo Finance, we think this is the future of work and these will be big stocks that will be very successful. And as we've been telling you, we're also looking to start an IPO service exactly because of this, because you're never going to get this information from someone else. Everyone else sees these companies and looks at them the wrong way. They would have missed Google. They would have missed Facebook. They would have missed Tesla at the IPO. They would have missed all the great companies today. We won't miss them because our views is aligned with that way of thinking. So, I want, we're gonna be looking into all of the other IPOs and just watch out in general for updates on how we're doing with setting that up. Finally, crypto, Bitcoin hit 8,500. Just imagine, it was just in December when I made this video saying, hey, I'm calling the bottom on Bitcoin and it was at $3,800 and it's carrying a lot of crypto with it. And there is unbelievable activity going on and this is a place where I believe people should be interested because I believe it represents the future of money. Back to you, Amber. Great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ian. Pertinent, on-point insights as always. And thanks to our viewers and readers for tuning in to this channel, the Paul Mampilla YouTube channel. So please be sure to subscribe to our weekly updates to stay up to date on current stocks and companies that Paul and the team are always looking into just by clicking on the subscribe button just below. And so until next week, have an excellent week, everyone. Take care.